Hey there, Kirsten Joy Weiss here, and thank you for joining me today. In this episode, I team up with Gunny again, and we cover the Swedish Cool Spruza M36 water-cooled machine gun. This gun is very rare. It's extremely heavy and extremely smooth shooting. It is one of my favorite machine guns to shoot, and it also happens to be one of Gunny's all-time favorite guns which is saying a lot. So we're gonna learn together, we're gonna shoot together, and we're gonna blow some stuff up together. So please enjoy the show. You know, Thor might be a badass in the heavens, but out here on the battlefield, a freaking hammer just ain't gonna cut it, especially when compared to this man-made marvel of military might. Of all the guns that I've had on the show over the years, if I had my choice of all of them, it would be this guy right here. This is one piece of work. Carson, come over here and tell me about it, hon. Oh man, this is the Swedish Kulspruta M36. It's basically a modified Browning 1917 water-cooled machine gun, and it is a beast. Oh, there's no question about that. It's one bad piece of gear, right? <laughs> Absolutely, And there's yes. five of these in existence, I think. Five in the U.S. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, the but there were only about 12,000 made between 1939 and 1941. Mm -hmm. So they're very rare guns, and they're very rare in the U.S. How many rounds a minute can we fire through this thing? Well, it actually has a variable rate of fire. You can use this booster on the end to change the rate of fire. So anywhere from about 700 rounds a minute to 1,300 rounds a minute. Oh, okay. You have a water-cooled barrel right here, and then the steam actually goes down and is stored in here, and then you can just keep on shooting. Fill that sucker up with water, and you can just shoot until the cows come home, can't you? Absolutely. You don't have to worry about this heating up at all because the water just cycles through here, and it's self-sustaining, basically. Use it over and over. Yep. And in, in the case you're out in the desert, you certainly want to keep your water, right? You absolutely do. But in the case of Sweden, they have plenty of water. So and no no shortage of water in, in Sweden. But mm -hmm. in case a guy needed to take a leak, <laughs> you'd probably top that off, right? You could probably. I don't think that your mates would really appreciate that, though. Uh, that doesn't make any difference <laughs> about what my mates think. You know, they, they built this gun and they left nothing out. So we got all kinds of sights on here, don't we? All kinds, yeah. You have, right here, you have a very good five power optic. And then on the side, they actually have drop charts for a bunch of different calibers. Okay. Depending on what caliber, you have the drop chart for the mm -hmm. long distance. Then you have the elevation mechanism here and the traverse mechanism here. Okay, and that's this guy right here. Mm -hmm. And also, We've got the sight. Exactly. In case you have to do open sights, you have those as well. Yeah. Your sight system on this thing, you're covered for everything. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tucker was telling me he was shooting it the other day, he was shooting clear up on the side of the mountains up there. Oh, yeah. You'd own this entire valley with this gun. Yes, for mm -hmm. sure. I think uh, so. This is all you would need. This isn't just spraying and praying. This is a precise machine. And then on top of that, they have this mount that they developed specifically for the M36. And that's a soft mount. So it helps with the recoil. And also this buffer system is improved on the Browning 1917. It is, it's yeah. larger. Yeah. It's larger. So you get less, I mean, less right. vibration, less movement. You can more or less concentrate on watching the bullets go down range and keep it right on target. Exactly. Follow that, follow that vehicle or whatever you're after, the airplane that you're after. Yes. So this is a workhorse here. It is, and it's extremely heavy. The Browning 1917 was such a heavy machine gun, and originally the Swedish were using the 6.5 caliber, the 6.5 by 55 millimeter, and they thought, we're lugging around this heavy gun, over-engineered Cadillac of a gun, we might as well max it out. So what they did was they developed a caliber that was an eight millimeter caliber that was a, basically an eight millimeter magnum. So much more powerful than the eight millimeter Mauser. Oh, really? And they mm. souped up this baby with that caliber and they got some interesting results. 
Yeah, well, I see we have 30 caliber ammunition here. We do. Today, this is actually chambered in the 30 6 but traditionally, it was chambered mostly in 8 millimeter okay. Magnum. Okay, well, that's the beauty of it. You know, you make the modifications, and it's no big deal. 30 6 you can carry a ton more ammo. Rather <laughs> than the larger ammo, Yes. I mean, a 30 odd six bullet hits somebody, it's gonna take them down. It's it. You don't need a larger projectile to go out there and hit the guy. Absolutely, unless you're shooting at aircraft or you're trying to do indirect fire at very long ranges. And that's where this gun really shone. Uh, it was considered arguably the best long range machine gun. It could get from about 3,600 meters for effective range and then maximum range, 5,500 meters. You didn't know where those bullets were coming from. This is a work of art. Now, I want to shoot this gun. I am seriously into shooting this gun. You know, unless there's something else you need to tell us about it. I think it's best shown in action, to be honest. Let's go take this out and shoot it. What Sounds good, okay. absolutely. You're carrying it though, right? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, <laughs> Jack! We're, send Jack over here and get this gun out there. Jack can hump anything. Jack young and strong. We're headed for the range. So your butt had better be planted in that easy chair when we get back. Because the gunny ain't waiting on you, honey. Oh, there you are. Thought you might have fallen in or something. You ready to see the M36 in action? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Well, it looks like, as usual, the boys have some pretty seriously colorful Swedish targets down there. Heck yeah, they I'll do. I'll tell you what, ladies first, Kirsten. <laughs> well, you thank go you ahead. so much. Let's go for those colorful ones on the right there. <laughs> I think that work. was pretty spot on there, Kirsten. I think you got that one. You're on a roll now. <laughs> there you go. Yes! <laughs> That's kind of fun, isn't it's it? It's awesome. Why don't you give it a try? I, I believe I will. Ready? Oh, yes! Aha! No doubt about that one, is it? That's what I like to see. All right, Kirsten. The boys hit a bomb behind one of the shields on that Viking ship. Let's see if we can hit it and send a few Vikings to Valhalla. What do you say? All right, get that Viking ship. Sounds good. Here we go. I'm all zeroed in. Ready? That didn't get it. I'm moving on to the next shield. Three seals left, Kirsten. Why don't you take a turn? Sounds good. Take that ship out. <sighs> Think you can handle that? <laughs> we'll see. Get rid of that ship. That took care of them, I think. Yeah. I think so. They won't be raiding any villages anytime soon. No, they won't. That's sinking. That's a sinking ship right there. Kirsten, you know what? It's always a breath of fresh air having you out here on the set. 
You're always good with the guns. I love Thank shooting you with very your gunny. Much. Thank you God for having bless. me. You have a great day, okay? You too.